Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney on this channel. We answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answer they need from an employment attorney for free uh, on this video. Someone asked me recently to put together a quick guide about how I would want someone to report sexual harassment to HR. Uh, right off the bat, my advice is going to be different than the advice HR gives you. There's a reason for this. I, I Google quickly to see what like HR professionals say you should do, and they're wrong. The reason why my advice is different from the advice of HR professionals is because HR exists to protect the employer, not to help you. They will only choose to help you when in helping you, they limit liability and better the position of the employer. That is HR's job, right? I... I'm a plaintiff side employment attorney, right? So my entire worldview is based on getting you a check. That might not be what you want. You might just want the problem fixed. And then there's no one really out there advising you that I know of. But I'll tell you this. My approach is going to do a lot more to get the problem fixed than HR's, in my opinion. And that's not always, like, listen, there's always... There's always an exception that proves the rule. Sometimes HR does have to fix the problem to protect the company. And sometimes the company lets HR do its job. And in so doing, the HR professionals will actually fix the problem, better the company, and everyone wins. That That is possible. I see it happen at least once or twice a year. Of course, that once or twice a year is coming out of uh, thousands of claims that we speak to per year. So you can extrapolate from that. HR professionals are going to tell you, oh, just schedule an appointment to come in and see your HR representative. Never do this. Do not do this. This is nonsense. This is just a trap to get you in a one-on-one -on -one meeting for a verbal report. The worst thing you can do is verbally report sexual harassment. The only way you could do worse than verbally reporting sexual harassment is verbally reporting it one-on-one -on -one with somebody who may not choose to remember things quite the same as you remember the situation going down, right? <clears throat> so don't do that. Instead, you're going to create a written document. You're going to create it outside of your email, on your desktop, using a computer that is not controlled or owned by your employer. You're going to maintain a copy of that document. And you're going to use some detail. You're going to give specific voice to the sexually harassing actions that were taken against you, right? You're going to say when they happened. You're going to say what happened. You're going to say who did it. You're going to say how it made you feel, and you're going to say who saw it. You're also going to list any, uh, any glaring pieces of evidence, like the classic example in my industry is the, uh, the picture of human genitalia. It's very common. It's been common since about 2003, as far as I can tell, that certain people like to take pictures of their naughty bits and share them without consent from the recipient. This is a very common form of discrimination. Now, I don't think you should include that picture, that screenshot of that picture, in your your disclosure to HR, but uh, you can note that you have it, right? And, and don't worry about including all your evidence. You don't want to do that either. That's, listen, if you end up in litigation, you're going to be glad you didn't include everything later. But you do want to, you, you do want to hit the high notes, right? So you create that document. What happened? When it happened? Who was present? Who did it? How did you feel? The whole gamut. Great. You got it. Now proofread it a couple times. If you have an outside work support structure, have them take a look at it. Have them confirm that it's a cogent, well-said narrative of what you experienced. Great. Take it, copy and paste it into a third-party email server. Not, 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 not your work email. Why? You don't want this document to be wholly in the control of your employer because they might later say, you know what, we never got that. And that's going to be a huge problem for you because it's going to be a key point as to one, whether you complained or not, and two, maybe the timing for your retaliation claims. Because if you get this complaint in and then something bad happens to you, it's going to open up big 
retaliation claims. Those retaliation claims can be incredibly valuable. So sometimes employers lie about when you complain. Sometimes pieces of evidence disappear. Sometimes calendar entries don't seem to match up with your recollection, right? So what are we doing? We're getting a third party, a third party. Think Gmail, Hotmail, Proton Mail. I don't know. Whatever Yahoo Mail, is Yahoo Mail still a thing? I don't know. Whatever third party email server you can choose that has the least connection to your employer and which will create a completely neutral timestamp document that you can later prove, hey, I sent the email. Right, listen, they can say they got it, they didn't get it, they can claim they got it whenever, but this is when I sent it and here's proof on a timestamp server controlled by a neutral third party. So key, so important for you, right? Cases have hinged on that piece of evidence. Millions of dollars, millions, frankly tens of millions, have changed hands on specific cases because of the timing shown in that kind of piece of evidence. For real, this matters. You don't want it in control of the employer. You do want to be able to prove that you complained. Very simple, right? Now, either put a read receipt on it or follow up to make sure that HR received it because they could later claim, oh, we didn't get that. It went to spam because it was from Gmail or whatever it is, right? <sighs> Listen, you got to just follow up. Be like, hey, I just want to make sure you received my, uh, my email complaint last night, HR professional. Can you confirm receipt? Can you let me know that you received that? Very important. And then you wait. You wait, you sit, you think about what you want to happen. What does the solution look like to you, to the problem? Is it a check? Is it a change in who you report to? Is it training for the perpetrator? Never seen training change anyone, but maybe to you that's enough. I, I don't know, right? It's not my job to tell you what to want. It's my job to effectuate what you want. You're the boss. The victim is a shot caller and always should be. So that's the general vibe, the general approach that I want you to take when you're complaining of sexual harassment in the workplace. Coincidentally, it's nearly identical to what I would like you to engage in if you're complaining of workplace discrimination as well. It's the same ideas, the same concepts, nothing too novel, too different. Um, it's generally you know, addressing workplace harm, and that's very important. I hope this helped you. If it did, like, subscribe, comment down below, share our channel so it can grow, and I wish you well. I'm sorry you had to watch this video. I'm sorry that the subject matter of this video was important to you. It means that someone is doing something horrible to you, and I suspect you deserve better than that. So I'll be hoping for your success. Take care.